Welcome back, Cyber Traders, on this lovely Friday. How's everybody doing on this third? April, good to see you all. Good morning, Tim, Lita, Phil, Dennis, Ken, Chuck, Bonnie. Look at all you great, wonderful people. Welcome back. Let me tell you something. Um, yesterday was one of the better days we had in a while. Uh, I want to do a couple of quick shout outs, but I want to talk uh, regarding about what happened yesterday. Uh, I did great. I know a lot of you did great. Some of you did better than you expected. And I want to kind of explain that a little bit more because a lot of people don't realize that trading is a job, right? It's a, th that's what we do. It's not about making 2% or 20%. It's a job. It pays you a salary. And it's also, I mean, I know we have some people that like to fish out there. I'm a, I love to fish. I'm a Long Islander, so it's what we do up here. And you got to put in your time. And you know what? You bring home dinner here and there, but eventually you're going to hit that big whale. And you can't think every time you go out there, you're going to get it. But you are. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk. And it all started yesterday with LK. Now, LK, first of all, um, I'm telling you, I've never, well, I, I've seen it before, but I haven't seen a stock drop this big, this fast in pre-market. I, I can't even remember. So LK, the, the, um, the, uh, the copycat of Starbucks of China, that's basically what, what they are. And uh, they did a pretty good job. You know, they, they were pretty smart. They, you know, it's funny. You know, they all come here to the United States. They got they, – because I'm going to tell you what the whole story about this is. Because I, I could not figure out what made this stock get crushed. At 8.30 in the morning, which you all know is a very big time for us to trade here in pre-market at Cyber Trading, it started exactly at 3.30. News came out. Stock dropped. From $27, did not even think twice and just kept going lower and going lower and going. It dropped all the way down to $4 a share. $4. Unbelievable. And unfortunately for me, I didn't get it on the short, but some of you did. And what I, and because it, it was just going down so fast. So some of you guys killed it. I'm gonna bring them. I'm gonna bring them up, but um, but I got it on the bounce, and I was waiting for the bounce, waiting for the bounce, and uh, and it, it was funny. But it took about ten minutes to build its its base out there, and sure enough, I was very big into it. And this is all before the pre market, all before the pre market, right around nine o'clock. Finally, when it hit bottom around nine a.m., then it started going up, and it ran all the way to ten fifty a share. And you guys know it. You were in here. And, and, and we're sitting there trading like an animal trading the stock. And I told you exactly where the resistance level was. And by the way, this stock, because a lot of people were, were confused about it. I just want to explain something to you. Um, you know we trade stocks and they get halted all the time in the market. You cannot halt a stock in pre-market. It's called open game. Anything can happen. Um, one of the reasons why a lot of brokerage firms don't allow certain p accounts to open up in pre-market because they have no no rule. There's basically no rules. There's no regulation. If you get filled, that's your problem, whatever it is. And But you know, all know that that's where we make most of our money. But anyway, killed it. Killed it yesterday. And um, the thing that really ticked me off yesterday is I had such a huge profit, huge profit, and I couldn't get the hell out of it. It, you know, it was funny. You couldn't get into it when it was going up. You couldn't get out of it when it was going down. And by the way, this is what we train for. You know what I mean? So um, I know that Andre did pretty good. You got out at 10 bucks. You got it on the uptrend, and some of you guys did. And uh, I ended up getting out. I got, a, I got, you know, because I had so many shares of it. I got out around 10. I got out at 8. And I got out at 7. And you could see the stock drop all the way back down to 6 again. So I made, you know, I made like, I don't know. I made like, pfft. I posted, I posted when it was going up at 8, so it was up about 10,000 by then. But the thing was, um, I don't know, I think I'm out of, I got to probably be like a little bit over 12, I think it was. But, uh, but I, I should have, you know, it, it, those are things that just happen. We're in the right place at the right time. But you know what? I want to do a quick little shout out because um, for, there's somebody here that's been here for a while, and you see him, he's very well, he's, he's very outspoken in the trading room, and, you know, and uh, he's been here for, and he loves it, loves it, been here for a while. But Ken Thole had his best day. He made fi over $15,000 yesterday. And I just want to give him a round of applause. And everybody should give him a round of applause.
Best day ever he had, I, from, from, what, what, from what I understand. Right, Ken? Pretty good job. 15,000. Good for you, man. Um, 13, 13, 5 you made. All right. Give him, you know what? Give him electric guitar for that one. <laughs> 13, 5. So anyway, but you know what? You got to understand something, everybody. That is not our goal. It, when we come to work in the morning, it wasn't Ken Thole's goal to make $13,000 today. It wasn't my, my goal to make twelve. okay? Our goal is to make what we want to make for the day, and that's it. So I want to kind of reiterate something because for everybody that did really well yesterday, I want to kind of remind you something and give you a reality check. Just because you made a lot of money yesterday doesn't mean you're going to make it today. So please, do not get cocky, okay? Do not get cocky and don't go out there and think like, because let's say your goal, because us average day traders, our goal is to make 1000 a day, make a dollar a day. Just because you made 13000 doesn't mean now, you know, $1,000 is a joke. You know what I mean? You know, whatever. And they could blow $1,000. Now you're a big shot. So I'm warning you guys, do not get cocky. Because a lot of you guys did, you know, listen, we work really hard for days like yesterday and they don't come very often, but please don't go out there. You're right, Ken. It's not easy to make that. It's not. You know what it was? We were just in the right place at the right time, and we knew how to trade. And this is what you guys train for, and this is what the whole thing about what I'm talking about regarding about the coronavirus. This is what you train for. You, you trained for this volatility. There's no re better time to get into the market than today, you know, w what's going on. We've been doing great. This, this has been, like I told you, I, I probably, I haven't done this good in the market since, you know, it, I, I made more, I, I've done more, I made more money in the market in the past month than I've made in like nine months trading. And in this time of the year, that's that's like, that's unheard of. Be, not because I'm a great trader or any of you guys, because of what's happening in the market with the coronavirus. So you guys gotta be very, very prepared. And I just wanna kinda give you guys a little reality check. So do not go out there and get cocky because you had a great day yesterday. So LK, I'm just warning you right now, I am not looking at this stock at all. I don't wanna look at it. I don't wanna know about it. I don't care if it goes back to 10. First of all, the news that came out on this stock was so horrible, okay? Basically, they lied on their reports that they were making 30 uh, – they, they lied on their reports about something about $300, $300 million that they were making. They fudged all the numbers. And I'm telling you right now, the rumor has it that they might even get de delisted from the New York Stock Exchange, meaning they might send them back to – you want to be public, go to China or something like that. I think, I think with this whole coronavirus thing, you're going to see a lot of changes because I think there's over 100, 150 uh, Chinese stocks that are here that are trading publicly in the U.S. And apparently we can't audit them. I think that's the whole argument. And I think they're going to get um, – a company like this is really going to get in big, big trouble. And if the companies don't – I'm telling you, from what I heard, and I live here in New York, and I, and I was up to like 10 o'clock last night talking to you know friends of mine that are traders, and apparently the rumor has it that – uh, the U.S. government's going to start auditing because they don't apply by the same rules as U.S. companies. If they don't, they're going to delist them. So I could think you're going to see some gr more, a lot more LKs stocks that that are going to tank and might even be delisted. So really look fo looking forward to see what happens with, with that. Uh, but anyway, getting back to what we talked about, uh, 3M is a disgrace. Y you know what? They are. They are. And isn't th but 3M is a U.S. company. Right. That's that's the unfortunate part. But that's another new top. That's a total topic on itself. And I don't really want to get into that. Um, the bottom line is, you know, if 3M obviously is going to get in trouble, that is a stock we want to trade. And, you know, but the thing is, you know, the problem with 3M, it's an expensive stock. It's in the it was 130 or something like that. Um, something like that, that stock value. They're still going to make money regardless. They, you know, you know, it's it's unfortunately you keep your friends closer, your enemies, uh, you keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Is that what they say? So anyway, uh, 3M, you know, unfortunately you hate them, but they need them right now. You know, but they might, you know, listen, they'll get their day in court. You know, they're gonna things are gonna start changing. But anyway, getting back to the LK trade, I just want to bring that up. Uh, I don't want to pop everyone's bubble, but you did really good yesterday. Go out there, enjoy it, but just do not get cocky today. Regarding about now that all of a sudden you made all this money, you don't want to start giving it back. And then because that's what ends up happening. I see it all the time. People start getting a little cocky. They, they, they hit a home, a, a grand slam home run. Now all of a sudden they come up to bat and they're like, ah, I'm not going for a base hit. You stick with the program, what you were training course, stay on course, don't, and just focus on your day's pay. 
Now, regarding about today, let's get into – oh, and by the way, if you missed yesterday, don't worry about it. There's going to be more. We do it all the time. And the more you hear at CTU and the more you're a student, you know, you're going to see it. Just remember, this is what you train for. But when you're in class, by the way, like the phase three, lesson four, which was phenomenal, by the way, if, you had, if you're a student, a gold student, you know um, – you, you, I know people told me, it says, Faust, I'm watching it three times. It's just incredible how you kind of play that out on that close of the day. But you know what? That's, but it's about trading. You know, that's what we learn. That's where you got to spend most of your time. You got to earn. You got to learn before you can earn. But, um, but listen, today's Friday, okay? And we all know what Friday means. It's not the greatest day to trade. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing a lot of junk out there. A lot of junk. I'm not, I, there's a couple of good stocks that are moving but honestly, I am not impressed. I am not impressed. We all know Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are the best days to trade, okay? But there are a couple of stocks that are moving, and I do want to bring them up. Now, there's a lot of energy stocks that are moving. You know, we all know what happened with oil yesterday. Um, Trump did a tweet, and he said that Russia and, you know, Saudi Arabia are trying to work things out. I guess, you know, they're both shooting themselves in the foot, like, multiple times. So that, you know, that caused a, the, the energy stocks got crushed, but a lot of them are, are moving now. It's going to bring them up. Fix this up right here. So you have like NBL, you could see how they're moving up. They're not up a lot, but if you look at the long-term chart, they got crushed. I'm not a fan of trading these stocks at all. And, you know, and you know, when we talk about it in class, uh, one of the big problems with these stocks trading them, that their, their spreads are huge. Remember, you didn't make any money until you <laughs> until you sell the stock. So, you know that you know like my LK trade. I think it was up like twenty thousand, uh, twenty three thousand. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You know, as much as I wanted to keep it, I couldn't get out of all of it because the damn thing. Every time I got a hold of it, it dropped down two points. So remember, you, the the most important part of the trade, and we teach you this in the beginner class in phase one, lesson one, the beginner class that you guys take if you're a student. You got it's it's the three tree three T's tradable trend and trap okay oh by the way I, I don't want to I got to go back and talk about LK everybody keeps talking about like Fausto how did you know where the support and resistance levels by the way the level four was our Achilles heel yesterday that thing and you could see it there was a and the reason and I just want to bring this up because someone's asked me how did you know it was support at four there was a million share buyer at four bucks. You see that red line right there? That guy was there, and he was eating up all those shares. And you can see the Nexus 5, then 8. You can see that, 200,000, 100,000. So, and then there was a big, there was another, I don't know, like a, a half a million share seller at 1050, and that's where the resistance levels was. So anyway, a lot of you guys are asking me, how did you know where the support and resistance level was? Not only did we see it um, on the book viewer, uh, but on NASDAQ, but on, on, uh, but on uh, the book, the level four book map. And just to remind you one other thing, because I know Josh, and I want to reiterate something that happened yesterday. Josh uh, was telling you guys it wasn't working. You, the data was getting so crushed on the book viewer that I had to go back to NASDAQ. NASDAQ was the only thing I was getting real quotes on. This thing was, it was just eating it up and destroying the data. You couldn't get any data from it. It was just, there was just too much going on with too many orders and it couldn't, it couldn't calculate it. So for some of you who are trying to tell me how did I figure out that resistance, it was good in when it started, and then when the market started trading, I had to go back to the other platform that we use, uh, the NASDAQ Book Viewer, which, you know, obviously we, we talk a lot about, and that's where I found it. So getting back to these oil stocks again, WPX is another one, DNO, WPX. You can see they're all gapped up right now, 10%, 3%, USO. Um, some of them have good spreads like this one. Oil, obviously, the word oil, you know. But um, you got to be careful of the spreads, all right? APA, yep, yeah, that's another one right there. I saw that one. That one's moving actually pretty nicely. I put that on my watch list too, okay? Now let's go. You're in right now, Jerry? Okay. Yeah, that one's moving pretty nice. That stock got a little destroyed, making a little bit of a comeback. All right, there's a couple other ones that are moving this morning that are obviously trading on their own news, and you can see them there on the big percentage gainers list. You had ECOR that we saw this morning. I don't know what happened, but now she's starting to trend down. So she's probably going to be a scratch now. AYTU. 
was another one I found. But I don't know. They, they really didn't move. I mean, like, it's up 4%. Uh, now it's up 4%. I don't know. The big news this morning is Tesla. Tesla is gapped up pretty big. It's up 13%. Um, but now she's starting to trend down again. So that one doesn't look good. And then APA. That probably looks like the only one that's got to move. So not listen, not a really big um, market out there with you know on a Friday, which is okay. You know, listen, when the market opens up, we always find something different. You know what I mean? There's always new ones that will pop up. It's just as of right now, pre-market wasn't the greatest on Fridays, which we know that already, which we know that. And, and you know, and the more you hear every day in your practice, the more you know when, to, when you need to work and when you don't need to work because you know what? Trading's not a full-time job. All right, now, with that said, guys, you got about 10 minutes before the market opens up. We'll start audio commentary once the market opens up with me and Josh. And then um, for everybody, I know we have a lot of new members that have been joining us. Listen, I look forward to talking to a lot of you today. I know some of you have appointments with me. So we're going to make a decision if, it's, uh, if this is your opportunity to move forward or not. Listen, if it's not, it's okay. Don't take it in a bad way. Uh, it's just, you know what? I'd rather tell you the truth than you go out there and lose your money. So, you know, that's one of the big things, you know, we're not like, you know, you don't, you don't want me to, to kind of promise you the world and tell you everything is all puppy dogs and rainbows. Like, you know, maybe like some other people, I'm not trying to bash anyone, but unfortunately there are those people out there. Uh, listen, trading's not for everybody, but don't worry about it. As long as you tried it, we'll get there and then we'll, we'll go from there. We'll make that decision. But let me tell you, it is one of the greatest jobs in the world. It really is. Especially when you see. Something like LK. And if that doesn't sell you, I don't know what else could. Uh, I'd rather do that all day than wait for that stimulus check that's coming in for $1,200. All right, guys. Listen, good luck today. Happy trading. And uh, if you guys did well today or early, listen, take the whole weekend off. That's, well, where are you going, right? You're going to be stuck in your house with the uh, being locked in with the coronavirus. But listen, go out there. Go outside. Maybe do something. Maybe go exercise, whatever it is. Maybe cook a nice little dish. They always wanted to do, but remember, trading's not a full-time job. All right, guys, good luck, everyone. Happy trading, and uh, we'll be starting uh, commentary, like I said, in 10 minutes when the market opens up.